So as the as we move into the second act, Akoya goes back to um, Wakanda mm-hmm. with Riri. And so the queen obviously is distraught. She just lost her son. Now she thinks she's lost her daughter. Um, and so then I think this is one scene where really Andrew Bassett, besides the UN scene, shines. And it's the throne room scene. Oh, yeah. And so we're in the throne room with all of the elders and uh, she's sitting on the throne. Um, and uh, Ramona's sitting on the throne. And basically, Koyu is, is standing there, spear in hand, and basically says, look, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, they took her. You know, I, I know what I said, but I'm sorry about what happened. And so she says, you know, give me another chance. And so Ramona just is one. Look, if she gets nominated for an Oscar, I'm not saying she's going to, but there are there are times that she does shine. I could see it. I don't think she'd win, but I, I think that she could definitely. This would be one of those clips. And she basically said, I've lost everything now. I have nothing. I, I'm, I'm, I have nothing. You, this is, she was the last thing I could cling on to. And so at which point she strips her of being the general of the army. And so, um, now she is, she's no longer the general of the army and the priority now is to try and get Sherry back. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she was, she couldn't tell um, anybody about what Neymar was doing. I mean, the council had had a meeting about that, but the very, you know, trying to figure out what they should do. And so the next thing that in the sequence of, of events is basically they were trying to plan to get Sherry back and how were they going to do this? But while they were doing that, Riri and Shuri are down in, it's, it's not Atlantis, <laughs> but Tell we'll call it Atlantis. Yeah. Thank you. And so they are trying to figure out what's going on. And so Neymar is like, look, you know, maybe we can talk about this and, and figure things out. And so. And I love so at which, that scene. Go you see basically Namor telling his own story of how, you know, he came to be because basically the vibranium um, was found. Where was, oh boy, I forget. Do you remember where it was? Was it in like a plant or something like that? Yeah. 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 Like a plant and the Mm -hmm. mother and her people back in like, um, was it like Mesoamerica or something? Yes, like it was. Yes. It, or, and like they were having to decide whether they want to plan. She was pregnant with Namor at the time. And then she takes it as they go underwater and they're able to breathe underwater, but they can't breathe in, um, on the surface. And then this is a heartbreaking story about how, like, if you want to expand more upon that too. I think I think that was one thing that we as audience members needed because mm-hmm. Neymar is not one of those characters that's a household name unless you're really yeah. which I honestly I, I knew of the character but I didn't know mm-hmm. of his story and I mean I knew he's half half human but I didn't know his backstory so that 10 or 15 minute sequence if you even want to call it that that sequence when he's describing his upbringing yeah um, was incredibly important because you needed to fill in the audience of why he is who he is. And there's a great in his in his stakes. Yeah, there's too. there's this great sequence where he returns to the surface after being underwater for so long, and he sees his own people now being treated as slaves and horribly mistreated by these colonizers, almost and. They are just whipping them, and then he kills all these guys, and he burns their village, 
and they call him the child with no love because that is what they, you know, think that he is. And I have to say that, you know, you know, for me, when a comic book movie is really good, it's when I'm watching a comic book movie and I want to read the comics after I see the film. This happened to me with Deadpool. This happened to me with um, Shang-Chi and like a number of other good comic book movies. And this is one of them. I want to read all the Namor comics I can find after seeing this. This was an incredible way to introduce this character and to like, as you said, like audiences that don't know who he is. And um, I really, really was captivated by his relationship with Shuri. Because a lot of people have talked about, we've seen criticisms where they're like, oh, I feel like, you know, they had a script in place before with T'Challa, and now it feels like a lot of this is substituting the scenes that could have been for T'Challa. But, I mean, and I mean this with as much respect as I can say, I think that Shuri and Namor is actually, I think, more interesting than T'Challa and Namor. Because... Yeah. No, what, that, that's, for, that makes perfect yeah, sense. What really captivates me is as he says in that one line in the movie, he says, um, the most broken people are the best leaders or, um, you know, and yeah, that, that is what happens because if, if T'Challa, if like the storyline for T'Challa was around, sure he would still be alive. So T'Challa still would have had Shuri and he still would have had Nakia. The fact that Shuri, and we'll get to it, um, Shuri, by the end of this film, literally has no members of her family left living. Um, and then it's just, I think that Namor really has this great relationship. It's not, it's not like a romantic relationship. No, it's just, it's more of, it's more of a platonic, listen, yes. here's what I'm doing, okay? He basically, she says, I want to see your world. Yes. And he then, Neymar, takes her to the capital city and says, look, you understand why I have to do what I mm -hmm. have to do. It, any great villain, and this is true in any film, not MCU, but in any great film, if you can show the stakes, and that's what it is, the stakes now, a villain, and I'm just going to take Thanos. Yeah. Everybody said, okay, Thanos is your villain. He's doing the wrong things for the right reasons. And that being said, people, I mean, you know, the Avengers, so, oh my God, he's going to wipe out half of, of the existing. But he was doing it because of the overabundance of what was, what we have. Okay. So we have to basically hit the reset button. And as Thanos says, I'm the only one who knows. Mm -hmm. When he says it to Gamora in Endgame, I'm the only one that knows this. I'm the only one that has the guts to do this. Now, getting back to the whole Neymar, when we see what the stakes are, when we see what he's built, what they've built, and they says, look, you see why I, I, I am who I am. I can't let this go. This, this, this is my world. Yep. So we now see the stakes of what Neymar is fighting for. So at that point, on the surface in Wakanda, they're figuring out a way. So the queen goes to an old friend in Haiti. And who is that? Lupita Nyong'o's Nakia. Yes. Who plays, yes. basically, it, she was Chadwick, but not, I want to say, um, T'Challa's love interest in the first Black Panther. But she was also a war dog who would go around... And even though she was Wakandan, she was kind of detached from Wakanda herself. And she was um, more of a fundamentalist. She wanted to change the world and be progressive. And she thought that Wakanda should have um, reached out to the rest of the world. And that goes with Ryan Kugler's theme of traditionalism versus like fundamentalism in the first Black Panther because that is what she wanted to do. And you can see what really surprised me here was they mentioned that 
she hasn't been back to Wakanda in six years. She left after T'Challa was blipped away in um, Infinity War. And I and she didn't even go back to the funeral. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to it later. There is, there is. Um, and that's the thing, like, I was like, wait, why is she doing this? But then we find out later. Um, I love Lupita Nyong'o. I love yeah. her in this movie. She really adds a lot of charm and a lot of just grace to every scene she's in. I love her costume. So, um, Ramonda asked um, Nakia to go save Shuri underwater and go to the world. And when Shuri, uh, when Nakia goes down, she wears this beautiful green and um, green and blue um, um, suit. suit and lets her. Um, go underwater, but it's so, a great scene. Okay. So, um, getting to getting back to that, um, what Kyle was saying, basically, um, she actually. By the way, costumes were. I would not be shocked if this gets another costume design Oscar nomination, just because it was amazing. Um, so, basically, to his point, she goes down and she finds Sherry, and they're able to get out. And so at which point, this is one of the scenes where, um, so Riri, and, and they were able to actually do it. So at that point, they can get back to the surface. And the queen is extremely thankful to her. And so she has her daughter back, and she has Riri back. But Neymar is none too pleased. And so there is, um, there's... So there was a little bit of a fight, you know, and one of them actually was going to die. And there was a, a little talk between Shuri and uh, Okia. You know, we have to go, we have to go, but I can save her, I can save her. And so they chose to leave her. Neymar comes in and basically says, you know, what happened? And she says, you know, somebody, uh, one of the colonizers came down and got the princess. And Riri. And so she says, um, can you save me? And at which point, you know, Neymar didn't say anything. And, um, you know, she does die. She does pass away. One thing I'm going to say I, that I really enjoyed was that um, it, the different colors of the font done for the different um, people. So for Wakanda's, you had one. For the, um, you know, for the sea people, you had another. And you had all these, for the Haitian woman that, that uh, was being spoken to, that she was telling her the story, was a different color. And it was, it was just well done all the way around. So it wasn't just one font. Um, there was, it was like a light bluish for Neymar and his people. And, and it was a different color for, um, the Wakandans and everything else. So yeah, it, it was amazing at that point. So she gets Sherry back and at, so now Neymar's pretty ticked off. And so they're walking through the market and, all of a sudden, water just starts coming in from every direction. And uh, it, it's being flooded. And they're under attack. And so Wakanda is just vulnerable and defenseless. And there's a lot of lives lost, you know, from a lot of people. And then um, Neymar, one of the scenes you see is Neymar flying up to... Um, you know, the throne room, essentially. And he tries to break through the glass, trying to get to uh, Didi, or Riri. And um, so she, the queen puts her behind her, and she's like, go, child, leave, because she wants to protect. And there's just one more punch, and completely floods the throne room. And by the way, I got to say that visual was unbelievable. It was just water flowing in, slow motion, and all you see is the throne 
just flip over. I went, that's a great visual right there. And so they're underwater. And um, now she wants to help. So she sticks around. So the queen and her are now underwater. And um, the queen goes down and saves her. And then they're trying to get back to the surface. And so in comes Sherry and Okoye and everybody. And so this is, you know, of course, this is a spoiler cast. So we see the queen face down. And they're actually able to revive Dee Dee. And the queen is now gone. She's dead. So now, not only has Shuri lost her brother, but she's lost her mother. And so she is just an emotional wreck. So at this point, we have another funeral, which was equally as moving and emotional as the first one. And once again, the, the casket was unbelievable. And so it, it was just one of those things where if it didn't get you the first time, it got you the second time. And so um, at that point, you know, you have um, one of the, uh, you have one of the um, leaders of the tribes and Baku basically come up to Shuri and say, look, what, you know, we're in, we're in need right now. We need a leader. What do you want to do? But he also said to her, listen, I promised your mother that if anything ever happened to her, I would give you counsel. And she's like, look, I just lost my mother the last family member I had, and you want me to do this now? So they come to an agreement, and the next shot you see is them trying to, so they move the city, okay, essentially, and they're trying to regroup, and they're trying to now prepare for um, that. They're trying to rebuild, and they're trying to repair everything. At which point, um, yeah, so at that point, now Shuri is in a position where she has to lead. And this is when she goes back to trying to make that herb that she was so desperately trying to make in the beginning of the film for her brother. And so she has a couple of things and she, you know, it, it kind of like, uh, if I'm going to compare it to anything, kind of like Tony finding a new element, okay, in Iron Man 2. At which point, um, she gets some of the DNA, and she gets this, and she gets that. And eventually, um, what ends up happening is the computer, the AI, it ends up being a 90, I think it was a 98.6% confidence rate. And so she did it. And the one thing she was sent, because if you got to remember, guys, remember in Black Panther, Killmonger destroyed all of the herbs, except the one that brought back T'Challa. So now she was trying to synthetically develop another one. Well, she did. And so Okoye was, came with in and said, I'm sorry for your loss. In which case, now she's basically saying, look, we need you more now than ever. And so, you know, she's, Okoye basically says, look, you're, you're the queen has stripped me of being the general. I don't know what to do. I'm lost. But we need somebody right now. And that is the, that's you. So they... She basically develops the herb, but she says, well, how do we know if it's going to work? And she's like, it's going to go blue, glow blue. And so they're holding hands and it glows and she did it. And this for me and Kyle can speak to this in a minute is if 
basically, to me, this signifies the end of the second act. So we now know what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. We have the people safe and we know that she's developed the herb. One, by the way, only one. So, um, in which case she decides it's my time now and I'm going to take the herb. So they crush the herb and. Okay. So How does this look? Cause that, that, that's this great. Is, that's fantastic. This is unfortunately, my. No, no, that's Old perfect. Charger was much longer, so it couldn't extend. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. It's, I just, that's fine. That's okay. fine. No worries. So she crushes the herb, and, you know, the, there was a little gag about, shouldn't we be saying prayers right now or nothing? So Sherry lays down, and she takes some of the herb. And I want to let you, Kyle, this is one of the most interesting cameos I knew there was going to be something. I didn't know what it was going to be. But we, so we go to this dream state, just like any time, you know, was done. And we're in the throne room. And the, the chain was from behind. And we, I, I could see there's a little bit of a head peering out. And she starts walking around. And who's sitting in the throne, Kyle? Eric Killmonger slash Eric Stevens, um, played by the impeccable Michael B. Jordan from the first Black Panther. And I think I heard a rumor early on that he was going to be in the movie, so it wasn't a complete shock that he was in it. Also, him and Ryan Coogler have a very close relationship where he's been in every Ryan movie that he's made. And also, I think that there's a little bit more of a meaningful I idea that he's in this film because he was f friends with Chadwick too. They all were friends with Chadwick. Yeah. So him being in this film is, I think, also in a way, um, him being there for Chadwick. Um, I really thought that was a great scene where he basically kind of confronts Shuri about how much vengeance she wants. And... Shuri, if you notice, David, is in a very, very similar position to T'Challa in Captain America Civil War after Zemo yes. kills T'Chaka. His father. father. Yes. Namor kills Queen Ramonda. And you get to see, you know, um, her vengeance start to get in there. And it's very interesting because it's like, I wonder if she had this feeling when T'Chaka, her father, was killed. Did she want vengeance against Zemo? Um, we never know that. But I think that maybe the fact that, you know, she's now the only one that can get vengeance because her brother is no longer here to get vengeance for his mother. Um, once again, another very powerful theme of this movie that I think motherhood... Um, like where I think the first film is a story of a father and his son. This is a story of a mother and her daughter. And man, I'm, my mind is blown just thinking about this. Right yeah. Now. Um, yeah. And it's, it's you know, yeah. it's one of those things where it's just so oh, I love it. Oh. unbelievable to think about. And it's like, you, 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 and you, the reason why it's blown, Kyle, is because at the, at the time, this is, and see, this is why I love watching films. People will make fun of me or criticize me for watching the same movie four times. Uh uh. And the reason being is the first time you watch a movie, you're absorbing the material, you're, you're taking it in. The second time, when you go back to see this tonight, I guarantee you, mark my words in this, you're going to see things that you didn't see the first time. Oh, yeah. Like the literally, United States thing. David, hopefully, literally, I will see things that I didn't see the first yeah. time. <laughs> the third time you go and see it, okay, you're going to see more things. You had already seen it. It's not background noise, but you want to take it more in. That's why people digest movies three and four and five times. 
I saw Black Panther in the theater three times when it was originally released. You know, excluding yesterday was four, but it was unbelievable. I want to go back and see this again tonight because I'm sure there are things in there that I missed that, you know. So that being said, so that was a, it, I didn't know he was going to be in it. I thought it was a cool callback. Um, and to, to echo everything you just said, you're absolutely right. Basically, he says, look, what do you want? Okay, your brother is now dead. Your mother is now dead. You know who killed your mother. You're just going to let him sit there and, and, and do whatever they want? Or are you going to go kick his ass? And this is when she's like, okay, it's time. And so this is when we see the Black Panther suit. So th this is when, you know, we're, we're getting very close to the final showdown. So the armies are now starting to um, get together and they are moving. And then, you know, Okoye, or it wasn't Okoye, but one of them came over and said, you know, be a key, I thank you. I always mess her name up. But um, she says, be honest with me. Who did you see when you took the herb? And she didn't tell her again. And yeah. So at that point, basically, it's it's trying to assemble everybody and, and get everybody together. And so there's going to be an attack on. So they figured out how to subdue Neymar at this point. And so this is when um, the, this is really when the. the I mean, there's about 15 or 20 minutes of a battle that's going to happen between the Wakandans and, and everybody else. And so, you know, they said, look, we've, we've got a plan. I lost him. And so what ends up happening um, is that, um, like I said, it's about a 15 or 20 minute battle. And so they came up with the um, she Sherry had come up with the idea of basically putting him in heat to dry him out. And so as the battle progressed, um, she got um, she got Neymar in the ship and was able to totally isolate him and start drying him out. And so he had this spear made of pure vibranium and was slamming it down, trying to destroy the ship. So at which point, what ended up happening was uh, she had to fight him. Meanwhile, you have that epic battle going on in the sea. And so what ends up happening is but that, yeah. So what ends up happening is that Sherry and Neymar are now going to go at it. And so the AI basically says, you know, how much is the damage? It's catastrophic. Okay, get us to the desert. So they shoot, the ship shoots them over to the desert. And um, what ends up happening is ship explodes. They all fall, you know, tumbling down. The ship is gone. And so they go at it. And one thing I, I said in a tweet here, I love the cross cutting here. I thought the third act oh, here yeah. on this final was absolutely spot on. So anybody who doesn't know what cross cutting is, cross cutting is when you have two scenes. It usually happens in the third act. But so cross cutting is a technique in which editors use, which there are two simultaneous scenes, usually when the two scenes are converging. And they will go from scene A to scene B, back to scene A, back to scene B. And I thought the cross-cutting here was absolutely Good. impeccable. And so, I mean, when you saw the fight on the, on, the, on the ship, going back to a few punches with Shuri and Neymar, going back to the ship. And this went on for a couple I minutes. I say, I really yeah, like that this movie had this ship battle in the ocean because it – really felt like it stood apart from other MCU final battles. Um, like, I mean, Black Widow had the sky battle. Um, um, Eternals kind of... Eternals had the 
you know, giant celestial coming out of the ocean, and uh, there was, like, a volcano, too, there. But, I mean, I thought that this was really a unique battle sequence. It reminded me, get this, it reminded me of Pirates of the Caribbean. I was watching this, and, like, that one scene where all the Wakandans are on top of the ship, and they're like, Ibambe! Ibambe! And then you see, like, all the um, um, tallow cans on the thing. I'm like, this is like Pirates of the Caribbean right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, so yeah, it goes back and forth for a, a few minutes. And then we, then basically the focus is put on Neymar and, and Shuri. And, you know, I mean, one of the first things that Shuri does is cut off one of his wings. Oh, so oh, that yeah, that, that, that was brutal. And so now he's kind of limping, but he's still fighting. And so then it's back and forth. And then we see that Neymar basically stabs her. Yeah. And, you know, not sure just one. Like that really. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> like, and that's for a minute, for a split second, that's what I thought. And I mean, this isn't through the shoulder. Or the, no, he literally stabs her through the abdomen. And um, I'm like, wow, would they really kill her off that quickly seeing what i had seen in in thor i went hmm it wouldn't shock me but okay so then we see the cut scene back to um killmonger and then basically she says to him look i'm going to have him be begging for his life. I'm going to be standing over him while he begs for his life. And so we go cut back to her and she breaks off the spear and she pushes herself off of the wooden portion of the spear. And she, I mean, this is, is, this is really, I mean, yeah. Looking at the way that the MCU has betrayed violence that was a really violent sequence because she yeah. really is. So, and then we see her flip, no, we see her jump over Neymar. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And basically he's like, okay, game on now. And at which point she, uh, she starts kicking his butt. And then there's an, ex- well, you know, there's wait, wait, an explosion. Then she- she yeah, hold on. jumps on him, yeah, and then ahead. she's like Wakanda forever with her. Yeah, um, Wakanda forever. Control, and that and just, that just blasts. Blows the ship up behind them. I thought it killed him. I really did. So did and I. he's like, just, I was like, oh my, my God. He's like burned all on his back. And- yeah, he, he's got to, he's got to be yeah. dead, right? And then we see, you know, she, she's about ready to just put the spear in him. And in which case, Ramona comes over and says, Shuri, show him who you really are. And then she backs which off. Which is a line. And he basically from, says. Um, the first Black Panther, I believe, she, they say that line. Yeah. I forget when, though. Do you remember? Because you saw it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, so it basically he says, I yield. In which case, you know, then the ship comes over. They all stop. Neymar takes his people and retreats. But, um, yeah, so in which case, they're starting to rebuild Wakanda. And... Then, um, Neymar, we, we go back down to underwater and Neymar gives a speech to his beloved about, well, I want to really fight by you. And he says, uh, look, she could have killed me if she wanted, but she saved my life. This is going to be the best thing for both of us, but they will get theirs in the end. So, um, yeah. Um, and that's, and so they kind of wrapped it up in a couple of different ways. 
Um, and, you know, even when we were talking about it, we didn't speak once about the whole Martin Freeman, no, Julius really. Dreyfus storyline. That, and this is where we're going to get into our critiques here in a minute. And so, like, one of the final scenes is, um, you know, Martin Freeman's character is basically being hauled off to jail, and Okoye saves him. And so, that's that. Um, but the big, the big to do was there was one after credit scene, and this is what uh, Ramona didn't tell Shuri and. What was that, Kyle? Well, no, no, no. So, um, th- th- before before the after credit scene, though, there is the ending of the film, which is, yeah, which um, I, I will say the end credit scene broke me. I was a, a complete mess after the end credit scene, but the the ending of the film also really affected me. I mean, I was cr- um, crying from the end of the movie. The end. I mean, everything is kind of um, fixed in Wakanda, but there's still issues. But Shuri decides to go to the beach and get yes, her mother's, yes. her mother's um, um, funeral you know, garb. garb. And she, you know, burns it. She burns it. And this is... She does a ritual that she didn't want to do. This is the moment in the film that the entire film was building to. And it right. is the main character finally dealing and confronting her grief. And you see a montage of Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. And it is done with no music. It just, it couldn't do it, it just. It is done with no music. It is, it is silent. Um, I, it's I unbelievable. Correct, right? The Rihanna song happened. To go yes, 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 yes. So yeah, like right, right. The, no, you're right. The, the you're montage right. is silent, which is something I did not expect. It mm-hmm. is, it is so. Uh, and if you actually want to go back to, yeah. to your point, real quick, the beginning of the film, when they're doing the Marvel Studios, was completely silent. Oh, you're well. right. I didn't think about that. You're right, David. You're right. So there is that juxtaposition yeah. there. And this is where if you're a storyteller or you're a filmmaker or a movie maker, you want to be able to just tie everything uh-huh. up in a nice little bow. And one thing that this movie does, while it may have a little bit of fat to it, and we'll get to it here in a minute, is it's able to tie everything up and to have that montage, like which the, just like... The montage now, you've seen... You've and seen so, Furious Seven, right? Fast Furious Seven. Yes. That yes. film probably it, it, has like the best tribute I've seen in a movie. Like just the way that tribute is done is yeah. so beautiful, and it 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 grabs me every single time. I'm a mess watching it, but yeah. this one, I am so happy it felt different because it's not. I I was saying in our spaces on Twitter last night, it's not your Hollywood ending, your Hollywood tribute. This yeah. is way more personal than that. And it is the fact that you realize watching that ending that we really haven't seen much of Chadwick, um, you know, in the film. Like, they haven't shown any flashbacks. They haven't shown... They never even showed... Like, he never speaks in the film. Like, you never hear his voice. And it was like... I was a little shocked by that. I thought that we would get something like that. But no, what we get is this montage. And like, I I was saying to myself, well, wait a second. What about Captain America Civil War? You know, like, why aren't we seeing that scene? But Shuri wasn't in Captain America Civil War. She didn't experience this. This is her movie. This is her tale. And to see her dealing with this character, and then it just ends after the montage. And I thought the movie would continue after that. I didn't think it would end right there. But it just ends, yeah. and then Rihanna's song comes on, you know. Which, Rihanna. by the way, I think that. I, so now that you've, I imagine you've seen Top Gun Maverick, or at course. least heard the Lady Gaga uh, song. I, I mean, yeah. So I, I know that she was a front runner, 
and and everybody said, oh, you know, this I I went on record and said I think she was going to win her second Oscar. Now that we have this "Lift Me Up" by Rihanna, do you think this? Did you Rihanna's think she wins an Oscar for this? Rihanna's getting. She's got it. Oh, there's Rihanna's not a question. Nominated. There's not a question. She's not going to get nominated. The question is right now, to date, there's two songs in the running. I mean, there's going to be five yeah. songs there at the Academy Awards, and they're all going to be performed. But I got to believe the two front runners are Lady Gaga right now. and Rihanna. Right now, I have to believe that. Right now, who's going to win? So who's going to win? Unless um, my money might be yeah. on Zoe Saldana. Because I don't know if you know this, David, but they just announced a couple weeks ago that Zoe Saldana is singing a song for Avatar The Way of Water. Well, and that was a perfect segue. I was going to say, unless they can, The Way of Water is going to have something, I'm not going to doubt it, but The Way of Water is going to have something to... I don't want to jinx it, though, so, yeah. This is going to... No, no, of course not. But I mean, I think that... There is going to be uh, something there. I, mean, I think you're going to have Black Panther, uh, the Wakanda Forever song, Lift Me Up. I think you're going to have the Lady Gaga song, and I think you're going to have Way of Water, and then you're going to have two other nominees that are just in, in yeah, the distance, I, so to speak. I, I really think so. that, I mean, I was a bit critical of the Rihanna song when I first heard it. I didn't, because I didn't hear it with the movie, and I well, no, I, I, that was the first time I had heard it oh, last okay, night. Wow. Okay. Well, that was okay. the first time so I had heard it. I had never heard I it prior. I first heard it outside of the movie. I was like, um, I, I expected a bit more. Like, I was a bit critical of it. Watching the film, I think it, it's perfect because it really, I think, bridges the gap between you watching the end of the movie and you watching the end credits scene. And that's something that you just wouldn't be. Able yeah, it to makes help. sense. I mean, just the title "Lift what Me Up." You, I mean, what did you think? Of the I got to be honest. It in the theater, I I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was perfect, mm-hmm. just because of how everything went, and you had what you were talking about. This movie, at its core, there's a couple of main things, but it's at its core. This movie's yeah. about grief, and to have that kind of song, I I'll be honest with you. If I had a better dollar today for the Academy Awards, mm-hmm. I'll bet you Rihanna wins. And the reason I'm saying that is because Lady Gaga won it a couple of years ago for and, I uh, mean, Shallow. Not to be, you know, not and to, and the sentimental like this, but touch too. I didn't. I didn't. No, think yeah, that, but I didn't. We're think human. That hold my hand was that great, <laughs> like. It's an no, okay it was song. okay. Um, so we'll we'll see. Um, we'll see. Like Top Gun. Yeah, I mean we'll that, that's down the road though. Chances at the Oscars because um, I I don't know. Like the Oscar is. I, I wonder. Would you like to discuss? Let's get to the end credit scene. But would you like to discuss? Like, yeah. The so Oscar chances the, for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. But let's 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 yes. let's talk about the end credit scene. Yes. So she grieves. She's grieving. It cuts to black. We go to the credits. And then there is one after credit scene that we see this somebody bringing out a young man. And so sits down next to him and she's like, look, this is my son. And so, um, you know, he was Wakandan, obviously, and basically, you know, um, that's that's what my that's why I wasn't at his funeral, you know. So because of what happened, and so he, I think he was about six, and then they uh, it's the start of a new Black Panther, and so I went, wow. Did it did it hit you? Did it grab I, it was you, David? Just yeah. Yeah, it, it grabbed me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, but a couple of things I'll say, or, or the main thing I'll say. When Feige said months ago that I didn't want to recast because it was too soon, he said, I didn't nest basically that 
not that I wouldn't recast, but it's too soon. So the next picture you see will have this young man of, we'll say 10, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, learning to become I don't think so. the Black Panther. I don't think I, so. I really believe that. Sure, he's Black Panther. I, I don't see the kid becoming Black well, Panther at least till maybe well, the fifth. Maybe yeah. not this film. But, okay, so maybe what they'll do is maybe they'll make a Disney Plus show. I, and by the way, this is total speculation on my part. I don't know. But may, they might do like a Disney Plus show. And they might push the I story have, along a little bit like they did with the Marvels and everything I have else. A, I have a theory. I don't I know. So that that's a, I haven't even talked it. to anyone about yet. And, and um, it's great. So in, in the, I'm sure you know, in the comics, Black Panther has a relationship with Storm from the X-Men or T'Challa has a relationship with Storm from the X-Men and their relationship goes back actually since, since they were like kids. That's how they kind of wrote it. I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce this relationship, but with T'Challa's son and they can have Storm be a child. This will give the MCU yeah, makes sense. a long game because contrary to popular belief based on the X-Men movies, Storm wasn't in the first class of X-Men. She was in, you know, a later class. And yeah, she exactly, was in a later generation. And, um, the, the fact that they could, I mean, Storm's a great character, but they could maybe explore you know having her as a child because she she goes through some dark stuff as a kid and um where she lives um but like you can really i think go into that and maybe have her meet um this child t'challa that could be where they're going with x-men and that's something else but to talk about the end you know but but he did to, to your point though there was one key word that neymar said that when i heard it I immediately, uh -huh. my eyebrows got raised. Yes, yes. And it was mutant. This is going to be the introduction, not with him, but this, everybody has been chomping yeah. at the bit for the X-Men to come into the MCU. Chomping at the bit. I think what you're going to see, start seeing over the next course of the next several years is bit by bit by bit by bit. One mutant being introduced here, one mutant being introduced there. And what you're going to get eventually in, let's say, five years, five to seven years, yes. is a bunch of mutants being introduced to your point of smaller, you know, uh, kids or whatever. And, you know, I mean, so it's a completely different way of doing it. Um, so that that was the one word. No, I, I, think, I think that yeah. you're... Uh, Theory is spot so on. Just to, I think you, to talk I think about you the have end a good credit scene. Good. I was so emotionally broken based on it because the kid says my real name is T'Challa, yes. son of Prince T'Challa. And it was at that yeah. moment, David, where I, I mean, depending on who listens to this, but I wanted to just like tell every single person saying recast T'Challa <laughs> to shut up. Because, yeah, like, go. that, yeah. This, yeah. this, David, this yeah, is absolutely. why they didn't recast the role. This right here is why T'Challa is Black Panther, and T'Challa is still Black Panther. Yes, you can say it's his son, but like, you are still like a lot of these people are saying things like, you need, I saw someone say that, um, you need Black Panther because you need a black male superhero for children. And it's like, look at all these badass women. Look at all these young girls who haven't had this. They, and we didn't even get them. into, and, then, and then now let's you, get into you that now real have quick. a black superhero possibly. I mean, who knows? Maybe this kid doesn't even become a Black Panther. But still, it makes me feel. That was one of the, that was one of the yeah. coolest things I saw from this film. The, the uh, pros was you saw strong women that were kicking ass 
and taking names, whether it was with their words, with the Queen in the United Nations, or Surrey do it physically. It was so good to see that and and just unbelievably now, David, physical me, and just working and doing it question, so well. I've seen this. This is a big criticism with this movie that I've seen. And we, we saw this in our spaces. How did you feel about Angela Bassett, Queen um, Ramonda's death? Did you think it was earned in the film? You know, I mean, I think that I think she yeah. was being a mother. I, at, the, at, the, at her core, I mean, that was her her son that died at the beginning of the film. That was her daughter. Okay, she was being a mother. Now, was it earned? Oh. Who's to say? But as when a mother is a parent, when you're a parent, the one thing you will do is you will give life and limb for your child at whatever cost. That being said. She was, why do you think she put her behind her as it being earned? It, look, I think that mm. she was just being protective. I, I knew somebody was going to die. You know, was it going to be, the, it wasn't going to be yeah. Riri. Okay. They weren't going to kill Sherry off because she was the main character. Okay. And, and a Koi who had to re-earn her, you know, her, she had something to prove. So she yeah. had to be the one to to die. Was it earned? Look, she even Yeah. I mean when they were drowning, she's you, the one that went down yeah. and saved. Wow, Riri. you're right. So I mean absolutely and, and you know this is You like, have to say it was earned. I was because I was she was saving one of her friends a child. And, and she was saying how they could you could see it as a way that they fridged Ramonda, which is the term that you kill a character off in order to further the plot of the other character. Yes, but I do think what's interesting about Ramonda is she kind of um, caused her own death by her sending Nakia down to Shuri. She sacrificed herself. War. And I think that, um, that she was such a um, prominent character in the film. I don't really see her... Like, I don't... I. I see what they're doing with her death. I'm excited to see it on a second time because I think it will only enhance my experience because now, because I didn't realize, I didn't know she would die. And to watch the movie now, knowing that this is like the last time she will be with her daughter, um, like her daughter's like still, you know, upset over her brother's death, but look at what's right in front of you. And, oh, there's so many layers to this film, Dave. I just love, I love it. No, yeah, Absolutely. And so getting, getting back, so I would say this, thoughts just in general. Number one, I thought it was about a 10 minute, I thought it was about 10 minutes too long. Especially with like that. Part um, yeah. At two hours and 41 minutes, it could have, you know, minus credits, six, seven minutes, still two hours and 35 minutes. You could have cut out the whole scene. You could have, you could have yeah. taken out Martin Freeman, Julie Louis Dreyfus whole storyline and still had a quality movie at two hours and 20 minutes. Number two, I loved what I was just talking about. I'd love to see the, the strong women, um, yeah. showing mm -hmm. their, you know, their gumption and basically doing that. Um, number three, you're talking about, um, this was always going to be an emotional yeah. movie, no matter what you did and how you did it. I don't think there was anybody else besides Ryan Coogler oh, that could so direct true. this. That's so true. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't believe that. I mean, you take any great director today, and I, I have all the respect for him in the world. There's nobody else that could have done this with that in mind. Um, and lastly, I hope, and, and as we go you know, further in the weeks before Avatar and whatnot, even deeper into that, I really hope that this movie does not get quantified by money because everybody's seeing. And look, I'll be the first, I'll be the very first one to say yeah. I thought this was going to make $200 million and everything else. And I, 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 um, I was wrong. Okay. The point is, though, I hope we can 
say, yeah. oh, because this only made $700 million, it was a bust. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? $700 million for a, um, you know, I really hope this doesn't get flushed down the drain, so to speak, that, yeah, I well, did. because it only made I this saw much, you on Twitter today, it wasn't a good film. We saw that the numbers for Wakanda Forever are not what we thought like a Thursday night numbers would be, especially for it was twenty. If I if I remember correctly from Scott's the tweet, fact that I want to say it was like twenty eight million dollars. Low Thor: Love and Thunder, right? Did that? It was like, ooh, that is yeah. that is yeah. something I didn't expect. Yeah. But then again, um, there are there are elements. To it's going to be I, interesting. I'm wondering to, if it to will further. pick up and surge over the weekend. Um, it's also a holiday weekend, so there's some things there that could affect it. There's a hurricane that was coming down Well, here, I was just so. going to say that. I think tonight, I think tonight is going yeah, to be I, the, the stepping stone. Whatever it man. does tonight is going yeah. to be the quintessential, yeah. I it, think, you know, quintessential number to see where it's yeah. going to go. And you have the reviews people, out, yeah. and you have word of mouth mm-hmm. out. And you have spoilers out. You've got a ton of different variables there. I know, like, just while I'm talking to you now, a friend of mine texted me saying I'm seeing Black Panther tonight. Um, I think that I saw the theater that I'm going to tonight sold out. Like, all this, all this, like, we had to get, Mm. we didn't get, like, the really close seats to the front, thank goodness, but we got, like, closer seats than I would have preferred because, like, those were the only ones available. Like, they are, they're really selling out. People are at the movies. There's a huge lines and like i think it is gonna be really really um you know it's gonna it's gonna draw people and i think that what's good is it's november it's gonna have a you know nice month that it can thrive in um but yeah like um yeah i mean if i had criticisms i think the character of namora who is like the the right hand woman of um, n- name more. I kind of wanted a little bit more from her. Um, we don't really know much. About her. Yeah, we don't really know much. She was about definitely her. underutilized. Um, I, gotta be I would honest. assume it's for like probably expanding upon later in the MCU. Um, but like, I felt like Tallow can they could have you know explored some more of the characters from there. Um, in fact, they could have maybe done that instead of the whole Martin Freeman, Julia Louis-Dreyfus storyline. Um, I will watch it again to see how that works on a rewatch. Um, I think that the first Black Panther is a better movie. I think that not only is it a better movie, but... Oh, hands down. Um, I think that it's a shame because like the movie is just so, so good. Like It's like almost, it's like top five MC. And it's, well, it's, I well, I was just going to say that you, you took the words the right out of my mouth. It is a top five. Have MCU that movie in mind, and they like they have to compare it to it. And I don't think you have to do that. I think that they are both very different films, and you know you can look at them differently. But personally, I do prefer the first Black Panther. I also think the first Black Panther um, has a better villain in Michael B. Jordan's Killmonger. I mean, Namor's great. Namor's a really Absolutely. good villain. No doubt. But no doubt. To, there's, there's so much, Absolutely. I think, more to Killmonger that almost like he is, in oh, some absolutely. people's he, minds, yeah. the best part of that movie. And that is saying something when you have T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, who is so good in it. Um, but, I mean, it's still like, David, I really love Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. It is no, I did too. I, I think I, I, I really enjoyed it, and it was a great. I mean, the fact is, to your point, you took the words out of my mouth. It is a top MC the five first, MCU yeah, film. First, first. I think, and I've said this to you and others before, is um, it's so difficult. So, I mean, I can count on both my hands how many sequels are better than the original films. And, you know, you're talking The Godfather 2, you're talking The Dark Knight, you're talking Empire Strikes Back, you're talking, you know, Captain America Civil War, you're, you know, 
very, you know, very few and far between. And I think Ryan McQuaid, when in the space we were both in, said it best. Well, he didn't say it best, but he, this is what he was getting at. People want this. You have to judge a movie on its merits. And right now, everybody is judging this movie because they're emotional. And what you need to do is you need to be able to separate the oil from the water. That being said, you need to be able to go in this and be um, just I will. In, in, independently. And you need to have to re- stay with an open mind. That being said, I think it is very, very, very difficult to make a sequel that tops the original. And even if Chadwick was in this, I think it would have been much more difficult to make, as a matter of fact, I think it would have been more difficult to make a sequel I that would have topped the original. I would say to that the whole idea of people saying they love it, you know, because it's emotional. I don't want to, you know, say that somebody, it, their opinion isn't, you know, true based on their, you know, whether they're emotionally, because the end of the day, that is the point of the movie. The movie is emotional. It's supposed to be about grief and loss. And I think that oh, absolutely. I've seen some people, have you seen like on Twitter, people, some people think this film is better than the first Black Panther. And I, I gotta say, that is wonderful. And, and that's... I think that it shows you. Um, I mean, it's the subjectivity of film, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, you know, somebody, you know, only likes this film in the saying that because they were emotional for the movie. I think that there is a lot of people, well, there are a lot of people right now that really do love this film and do think it is better than the first. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I... I don't think so. I think just like you, I think the first and, and, movie, but and it's still a good film. And that's what we should. It's it, the fact yeah. is what I was just going to say is film is subjective, right? Film is subjective. So those people that believe that this is a better film than the original, more power mm-hmm. to you. God bless you. I, I think that's fantastic. However, you and I are in the same boat where we believe the original is better than this. And look, they. I have every right to the bin. I'm not one to take away from that. However, you know, and this is why I always say film is subjective. Everybody gets a different sentiment out of a but, movie. But can that we it's just, just say, a, this is it's based on interpretation. I think even the people that are criticizing, because like for me, like I've seen a lot more critics that are against the movie kind of saying what, you know, the people that love the movie, like what's, why, why they, why they, really love the movie like they don't really love it i think the thing that a lot of people aren't really discussing it's that both black panther and the sequel have incredibly layered stories and i think that that just shows you how great of a director ryan coogler is because both of these films we were on the spaces last night where we were on there for like, what, three hours, uh, it almost felt like, uh, maybe two hours, but we were talking about this movie, and there are things that we were discussing, and 24 hours after I've seen this film, I am, like, that whole thing, you just, you opened my eyes, you opened my eyes when you said, you know, she was being a mother, and, like, that stuff, that is something that, even some of the MCU movies, like Ant-Man and the Wasp, one of my least favorite MCU movies. I personally don't feel like that film has much depth to it. Um, this film does. And exactly. It's like an onion. This movie is like an onion. In the simple respect that you have a large layer. And then, you know what? You peel it back and there's another layer. You peel it back and there's another. I mean, you could basically say from... You know, one race, not, I mean, I'm just generalizing when I say all this, but you have one race against another race. That is the top layer of the onion. Then you peel that back and then you're having, you know, having to deal with situations. Then you peel that back and trying to reconcile that. Yeah. Then you peel it back and it's grief. 
Then you peel that back and it's, mm -hmm. how do you depend, how do you deal with that grief? And so on and so on and so on. So this movie is just so yeah. deep in so many different ways. And you go, yeah. ah, and I really, to your point, going back to see it a second time, I really think that you actually okay, David, get I think, more. Out I of think it we better time. put this to an end. Anyway, yeah. You so, yeah, it, I was you just gonna, gonna, gonna say. Tonight? Yeah, no, I was just gonna wrap Hopefully it up. Hopefully, it's not so loud. Now I'm gonna go back and see it again tonight. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, no joke. Huh? But uh, no, I. So once again, guys, I want to pre I want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching it. I've been had to take a hiatus because of some uh, life events, but. Here's the thing. This, well, first of all, I want to thank Kyle for joining me for the last two hours because he's, you know, th th we've always put it this way. We've yeah. almost been going as long as the film. <laughs> so, but that, because it needs oh, to be talked yeah. about and it needs to be discussed. Um, what I'm going to do is, and he's going to go see it again tonight. I'm going to go see it again, but it's just one of those things where this is going to be up. Um, hopefully, I'm going to send this out. Fingers crossed. I'm going to send this out and hopefully have this up by Monday. Um, and then, but what I'd like to start doing is I'd like to start doing the shows again. Um, I have a plan that uh, we might, instead of doing two video shows, we might do one podcast and one video. And that way it's not as too strenuous on everything else. We'll figure that schedule out. when Once we do, we'll let you know, and then everything will be a go. Um, guys, Thank you so much for staying with us. Um, this has been a blast and a half, and this is what we. Really? This is why we love movies, because movies like this drive us to either a want to go make better movies, and b go watch better movies. And when we critique movies, we don't do this in a negative form to say, "Oh, that movie was bad," or "Oh, that movie's." Bad. We do this, we critique, mm -hmm. we don't just drill into it because look, with social media the way it is today, and he's seen it and I've seen it, there are people out there that, you know, whether it's the Retrash Katala or whatever else, they just destroy movies and you can't do that. And this is what it's all about, being able to what do that. So anyways, guys, it's been a blast. Um, and he is Kyle, and I'm David, and you have been watching the spoiler cast for Wakanda Forever. Take it easy, David. Take have it fun easy, Kyle. Talk to you tonight. Bye. Have a good one.